Good morning children. Today our topic is all about plants. Right? We know so many things about plants. What are the things that we know? Plants are also living things. They are mostly green in color. They are found in the gardens, fields, crops, on the roadsides. We find all the plants. They are of different sizes. So as per their size, just you call them with two different names. The ones which are small, you call them as plant. And the one which is big, you call it as a tree. But is this naming is scientific? Shall we call the smaller ones as plants and bigger ones as trees? Right? Or is there any scientific way, systemic, systematic way of calling the plants? So let us find out or explore some important facts about the plants. The first thing that we are going to see is that how the plants are grouped, right? As per their size and appearance, the plants are grouped into three. Now here we are discussing the size of the plant. So that means when you are talking about the size of the plant, you need to compare it with somebody, right? So you are going to compare the size of the plant or tree with yourself, right? So where are you? You are here. Here you are and you have some plants or trees around you. So here you see that there is a small plant beside you which is smaller than you. So you observed it how it is. You looked at it. It's very small. It's very thin. And the stem is very tender. If you apply little force just to try to bend it, it may break. Such a tender plants are called as herbs. So we find such herbs in the garden and all around you find very small plants in the open grounds which have very tender stems, very small. Sometimes they cannot resist the wind even. Even for the wind they may break. Such a tender stem they have, right? So what are the herbs? You can write some herbs. You can take the herb as mint. You can take the example a herb, mint. You can take coriander, coriander. That is also a small herb, right? So then next move to the shrubs. What are these shrubs? These are much bigger plants, but they are not as big as the tree. How are the shrubs? The shrubs, they will be around your size, sometimes a little bigger than you, but their stems are hard. So here they are a bit taller than you. The stems are very hard compared to herbs. Herb, it is having a very tender stem. That means by applying a little pressure, you can break the stem. Whereas in case of a sherb, the stem is strong enough, but it is not as like a big tree. Just it is in the size of you or a little much taller than you. Okay, so that is a shrub. How are the stems? They are woody and strong. And one more important feature of the shrubs is that their branches, they come from the base of the plant, right? So if you observe the base of the plant, you find so many stems arising at the base. You can see that from the base, you can find so many branches. Branching is done at the base. So what are the examples of the shrubs? Many of the garden fruit shrubs, like you can see that guava is a shrub. It's not a big tree. Lemon, pomegranate, you can see all these are shrubs, even rose and jasmine and some berries, maple trees. All these are shrubs, right? So they are like very small trees, small in size. They are not like big trees like mango, neem, peepal, bunion. So those are the bigger trees. So if you see the bigger one, this is called as a tree. Generally trees, they have very big trunk. What is called as a, the stem of the tree is called as a trunk. It's very big and it is very broad and it is woody, so hard, full of wood, such kind of stem they have. And mostly in our climate, in our tropical climate, we have the trees with a 
strong trunk, no branching at the bottom. You don't find the branches at the bottom of the stem. Only after reaching certain height, you can find the branching. Right? So, from these branches, so many leaves arise and it forms a dome shape. Dome. This dome, sometimes it is also called as canopy. Canopy. So, you might be seeing a canopy of an umbrella. You know umbrella, you use it when it rains. You open the umbrella, there is a stick and over that there is a canopy. So, you will be hiding yourself in the canopy. So, by that no rain falls on you. In the same way, if you see a tree, there is a canopy. So, this is generally observed in the trees in tropical regions. Right? In India, in our climatic conditions, we see this in warm places. But as whereas in if you go to Himalayas and snowfall areas, there you find the conifers. Conifers, they have a different shape. They have a broad stem even. But the conifers, they have this particular cone shape. Right? So, that cone shape, it helps the tree to slide off all the snow down. So, there is a reason. So, here come back to the trees. The trees, they have a very big trunk. On that, there are so many branches which are filled with leaves and it forms an umbrella-like shape called a canopy. The trees are much taller than you, much bigger than you. You look small in front of a tree. Tree is a very bigger one. So, on basing the appearance, the size, we have divided the plants into herbs, shrubs and trees. Herbs are the plants with a very tender stem and they are very small in size. Shrubs are the plants with woody stems having the branches from the base of the tree and they grow approximately to your size or a little higher than you. Right? Trees are the very big plants which is having a very big trunk which is very broad and woody and heavy and after reaching a certain height there we find the branching and there you find number of leaves and all which forms a canopy or a dome shape. So that is a tree. So now you completely and clearly know the difference between a tree, a shrub and a herb. Right. So now let us explore the different parts of a plant and their functions. Right children, we have seen three different types of plants, herbs, shrubs and trees. Apart from these, there are some plants which have very weak stem. So by that they cannot stand erect. Generally plants, they stand erect. They grow away from the ground. Right. But whereas some plants, they have very weak stems and just they creep on the ground. They creep on the ground. So, as they are creeping on the ground, they are called as creepers. Why they are creeping? Because their stem is very thin. It is not strong. So, they cannot stand erect. So, they are creeping on the ground. Some of the creepers, they have some special structures. Some hook-like structures by which they catch hold of any support, any pillar, any pole and they grow along the pillar. That means they climb. So when the creepers, they climb, they are called as climbers. So what is the difference between a creeper and a climber? Creepers, they creep on the ground. Climbers, when there is a support, they grow on the support. With the help of special structures, they catch hold of the support and they grow on the support. Right. So, that is the difference between the creepers and climbers. So, these are different from the other three that is the herbs, shrubs and trees. Right. Now, let us explore the different parts of the plant. First, let us discuss about the stem. Stem is the main part of the plant. We know that the stem it gives support. This is a basic point that we have to notice. Right. We know that the main function of the stem is to give the support. So, it is the main support on which all the other parts are accommodated stem it has got leaves and in some cases flowers and fruits 
So the stem is the support, main support, that is the base on which all the parts are accommodated. Right? So the let us write the function support. But it performs one more important function. Do you know what is the main or major function of the stem? The stem, it helps in the process of conduction. What is this conduction? You know that we have highways, national highways and roads. So these roads and highways, they connect the different places. So by that the goods are transported through these highways or roads from one place to another place. Right? So we have some factory at Gujarat. There some materials are made, some products are manufactured. So from Gujarat, the products are to be transported to some other place that is to Chennai. So from Gujarat to Chennai, the products are travelled by the roadways or railways. So we need a transport system. In the same way, inside a plant there is a transport system which transport the materials from place of production or place of obtainment where they are obtained from the place of obtaining to the place of utilization that is to the place where it is needed. So the transport is required. So here that transport function is achieved by a system in the plant called as conductive tissue. So there are some special pipelines inside the stem which conduct the water and mineral salts. So you know that plant has got root under the soil. The root it anchors the plant in the soil and it also absorbs water and minerals from the soil. So whatever the water and minerals are absorbed by this plant, this water and minerals are taken through the special vessels or pipelines that are present inside the stem. So these pipelines, they carry the water and minerals to different parts like leaves, flowers and fruits. So this is, this is the transportation system, right? So this vessel system is called as a vascular system. The vascular system, it helps in conducting the water and minerals to different parts of the plant like leaves and fruits. And again, sometimes the food is prepared in the leaves. So that food is stored at some other part. So the food is conducted by the vascular tissue. Right. So here inside the stem, there are some special pipelines called vessels that help in the transportation. That is the major function. So the stem performs a function called as conduction of what? Conduction of water and mineral salts. So this can be identified or observed with a simple activity. You yourself can perform this activity. So what you need to do this activity? Let us see. You need to have a glass of water. Then you need a herb with a white or light colored flower. Take a herb with a light colored flower. Any herb with a light colored flower. Okay. If possible, better you take with a white colored flower. So here you have taken a herb. You have cut the stem of the herb which is having a white flower. Now you put a few drops of red ink, red ink into this water. Use a dropper. So now the water turns to red color. And you let it there for a few hours, two hours or three hours, then you can ob observe one thing, one interesting thing. What do you observe? You will observe that the white color of the flower changes to red. That means the water inside the glass tumbler is taken by the stem to the flower. So by this, we can give the statement that the stem, it conducted the water from the glass tumbler to the flower. Right. How can you say that? Because the flower changed its color. That means the red color which is present in this water has reached the flower. Right. So we can do one more activity that we can take out the stem. Just cut one slice of this stem with the help of a sharp blade. But do not use the blade on your own. Better you take the help of your parents 
or elders or your teacher. Somebody's adult supervision is required to use a blade because as it is a very sharp object, you may hurt yourself, right? So better with the help of your sister or brother, elder brother or elder sister or your parents, just collect the thin section slice of the stem and use a magnifier, a hand lens to see that. So if you take a slice, if you cut the stem into a slice, so inside you can see that color dots that shows that the stem has got some pipelines or vessels which are carrying the water. Right? So now, you can do the same experiment with a different setup. You have taken two glasses, A and B, and you have taken a flower with a stem, but you peel the stem into two. So you have split the stem into two. Now you arranged the stem in two glasses, one with blue color ink, the other with red color ink. After some time, what do you observe? So here the half part of the stem which is in the red and half part of the stem which is in the blue, both will conduct the water, both will conduct the color. So this one in case of B, blue color is conducted, in case of A, red color is conducted. So both the colors appear in the flower. So that's what, so by this you can conclude that stem, it performs the function of conduction. Stem has got some special pipelines called as vessels, which conduct the water and minerals to different parts of the plant. Right, that's all about the stem. So the next important part of the plant, that is the leaf. Now let us learn some interesting facts about the leaf. Now let us look at the another important part that is the leaf. Leaf is a green color part of the plant. Most of the leaves are green in color. Of course, there are certain leaves with red color and white color patches, right? So that is an exceptional case, but most of the leaves are green in color because of a pigment chlorophyll. So the main function, the major function of the leaf, you know that it is the preparation of food. The process is called as photosynthesis. Now let us see the parts of a leaf. A leaf, it has got a broad surface. A leaf is a flat organ. The surface or the green part of the leaf is called as lamina. Right? So the green part of the leaf is called as lamina and the stalk of the leaf is called as petiole. Petiole. So this is the petiole and this is the lamina. Right? There are some more parts in the leaf that you, if you observe it closely, if you have a magnifying glass, just you can observe what are the other parts in the leaf that you can see with the help of a magnifying glass or with a naked eye. If you observe a leaf, there you will find a deep line at the center of the leaf. It, it, you can observe this deep line if you observe the leaf from its underside, right? If you turn the leaf upside down on the back side, you can find a thick elongated structure which is dividing the leaf into two that is called as midrib. That is called as midrib. Right? And if you take a bunion leaf or if you take a paper leaf and you take a paper, you put the paper on the paper leaf, better on the back side of the paper leaf and you trace it with the help of a pencil, then you will find some sketching like this. You will find a sketching like this. This is the paper leaf. You will find a sketching like this. Oh, you can find so many lines over there. So what are these lines? Those lines you can feel with your hand also. If you take a dried paper leaf and if you just touch it, on the back side 
under surface of the leaf then you will find so many lines like this and all these are called as veins they are the network of pipes which are connected to the vessels of the stem what is their function how they are useful they are helpful in the conduction of water so the leaf it has got a network of veins for the supply of water and minerals to the leaf so that is the veins so in these veins we find a main or major vein which is extending from the petiole to the tip of the leaf that is called as midrib as I have written here right so the pattern of leaves the pattern of veins inside the leaf is called as leaf venation generally we find two different types of venation in leaves what is that venation let's see in some leaves see this leaf here the veins they arise at the petiole and extends till the end of the leaf tip of the leaf there are no branches you cannot see the branching of the vein the veins they run parallel to each other the veins they run parallel to each other this is called as parallel venation this is especially seen in the plants like grass rice wheat maize sugarcane in all these cases we find parallel venation so the second case here you find a leaf so in the leaf you will find the veins sub veins and veinlets so likewise there is a branching this is called as reticulate venation reticulate venation so reticulate venation is seen in the trees like papal tree banyan tree mango guava so in all these cases we find the reticulate venation okay so this is all about the appearance of the leaf and you know one more thing that leaf it consists of chlorophyll and the leaf it also consists of small pores on the underside of the leaf called as stomata so this is all about the physical appearance of the leaf now let us see the functioning of the leaf yes the major function of the leaf is to prepare the food right for the plant the food is prepared inside the leaf leaf is the factory leaf is the food factory of the plant because the food is manufactured there so do you know with what materials a leaf prepares the food it uses sunlight carbon dioxide and water with these three ingredients a leaf can make food in the form of glucose so glucose is the food which is prepared from carbon dioxide sunlight and water now let's see how this is done and let's see whether really these three are important to the plant or to the leaf to make the food or not now let us see the various process that takes place inside the leaf leaves carry out transpiration and leaves carry out photosynthesis first let us discuss about the transpiration so it is a process which is similar to your breathing what do you do you breathe in breathe out the air right so we are breathing in and breathing out air what is the difference do you find any difference in your breath let's see when you take in the air just you take air which is rich in oxygen and when you breathe out you leave the air which is filled with carbon dioxide collected from your lungs at the same time the air that you breathe out it will be having water vapor you can feel that so some water vapor you are leaving from where this water vapor comes from that comes from a process called as respiration inside you so from there the water vapor comes out right so in the same way a plant also releases some water vapor through its pores i already told you the leaves have got pores called as stomata so through stomata the leaves they leave out water vapor a plant constantly loses water vapor so this water vapor it might be produced during the photosynthesis and whatever the water is being absorbed by the plant some of the water is evaporated into the atmosphere and that process is called as transpiration right so transpiration is a process 
in which water is released out of the leaves in the form of water vapor. So, this we can observe it practically, prove it practically. So, for this you need to have a polythene sheet, a polythene cover. Now, you take the twigs of a herb, any herbal plant, any herb and you keep the twigs inside the cover and close that for some time, you will find that the water droplets are collected inside. You can observe the similar thing when you go to a flower bouquet shop, the flower bouquets are kept in the polythene covers. If you observe closely, there you find tiny droplets of water that is water vapor released by the flowers and leaves. right? And if you go to a, a vegetable shop, in sometimes if you go to buy some curry leaves or coriander such greeny vegetable, leafy vegetables that are packed in polythene bags, you can find that water droplets are collected. So, all this shows that the leaves, they release some water vapor and that process is called as transpiration. There are so many uses with this process. Because of transpiration, a plant is able to get water from the ground. Right. Okay. So, that is the process by which it balances the amount of water in its body. Okay. So, let us go to the next one, photosynthesis. So, I told you that photosynthesis is a process of food preparation in plant that is in the leaf. I told you the raw materials, a leaf it needs carbon dioxide, water and sunlight to make the food in the process of photosynthesis. So, a leaf it obtains the sunlight, it absorbs the sunlight by its surface. Leaf has got tiny pores called as stomata through which it absorbs the carbon dioxide and the leaf with the help of veins network it is connected to the stem, it gets the water. So, it is obtaining all the ingredients and what food it is preparing? It is preparing a food called as glucose and the glucose is changed to starch. That means, a leaf, if you say a leaf is preparing the food, a leaf is carrying out photosynthesis, it should contain some starch. Right. Then how do you test it? Yes, we can test a leaf for the presence of starch. How can we do that? What do we need? We need some materials to do the test for starch. Test for starch. What materials you need? You need a test tube, some alcohol, and a beaker with water and a burner. Now, what you do is that take the water beaker onto a burner. Now, take a test tube filled with the leaf and alcohol. So, see that the leaf is completely immersed in the alcohol and the alcohol is placed in the test tube. Now, the test tube is kept in the water, water bath. We call it as a water bath. As it is involved, fire, alcohol, you should be very, very careful and you should not do this on your own. You are not supposed to do this on your own. So, this activity has to be done by the teacher only for demonstration. Just you see that while your teacher does this activity for you because it involves two inflammable things, the fire, the burner and alcohol, very dangerous, catches the fire so quickly. Right. So, the test tube is filled with alcohol and it is placed in the water. You observe this point. The alcohol test tube is not directly kept in flame, it catches the fire. So, it is kept in water bath. So, now the water and alcohol both are allowed to boil for some time, then the test tube is removed, the leaf is removed, the leaf is washed in water and put some iodine to see whether it has got starch or not. So, what is the indication? If the leaf turns to dark blue color, it indicates it has got starch. So, somebody may put you a question. Yes, the leaf has got starch. I believe that. I agree with that. But what is the proof that leaf has prepared the starch? I don't agree. The starch might have come from the stem or from the root to the leaf. The leaf itself has not prepared the starch. Somebody may put the question like this. We have one more activity to disprove his statement. We can prove that the food, the starch is prepared in the leaf itself. So, what is that activity? Let us see. So, now see this activity by which we can prove that the food is prepared inside the leaf. It is not supplied from any other part of the plant. So, here we need a leaf which is attached to a plant. Do not pluck the leaf. So, what you are going to do is that you are going to cover some part of the leaf. You are not 
covering the whole leaf just you're covering a part of the leaf just take some cardboard and cover part of the leaf so cover it on both sides that is on the upper side just you take a cardboard so which is having the similar kind of shape on the back side also just you take it like a clip you fix it to the leaf leave it in the sun for one day right so after that you remove the leaf and you remove the cover the part which you have covered now again perform the alcohol test to the leaf right we have seen how to do the test take a beaker take a test tube with alcohol put the leaf in the alcohol put the test tube in the beaker with water and allow it to boil for some time take out the leaf wash it in water and apply some iodine then if it turns to dark blue color it indicates that it has got starch so now what happens is that if this leaf is tested for starch and starch is applied iodine is applied then you find all this turns to blue except this that area remains no change in color what does it indicate it indicates that in this particular area there was no photosynthesis because that particular area is missing something some ingredient what is that sunlight why it's missing sunlight because we covered it as we have covered it that area could not get the sunlight so what happened there was no photosynthesis so this proves that photosynthesis takes place in the leaf preparation of starch takes place in the leaves right so here in this particular part of the lesson we have identified the structure and functioning of the leaf so we have seen stem and leaf next we are moving to the next important part root of the plant so now let us see the second important part that is the root root is also a very important part of the plant as like the stem and leaf we discussed the importance of stem and the leaf now let us see the root root it has the main function of anchoring the plant into the soil so plant it holds the soil with the help of the root okay now let us see some interesting facts about the root here we have listed the points importance importance of the root monocot and dicot roots and types of roots relation between roots and venation so the importance is that their function is that they anchor the plant that that means they help the plant to fix in the soil there is one important function is that roots help the plant to fix in the soil so the roots they hold the soil tightly so by that the plant can stand if you see the bigger trees if you see coconut trees palm trees even though they are very tall they can withstand they can resist the high winds even during high winds the trees they doesn't fall because their roots they fix in the soil they hold the soil so tightly so firmly that means they give mechanical support that is one function so what is the second function of the roots is they absorb water and minerals from the soil and supply it to the tree right so the water and minerals are absorbed from the soil by the root okay so that is the second function absorption of water and minerals these two so that's the importance of the root now what's next is that monocot and dicot roots that means the rooting pattern of plants is different so on uh, we see that on basing the seed type we divide the plants into two categories monocot and dicot right so if you observe the roots of these two monocot and dicot you will find some difference so you you don't know you may not know that what is monocot and dicot i'll let you know that you know the seed cotyledons that means you know the seed structure seed leaves so the seed leaves you have studied in your fifth standard seed leaves are technically called as cotyledons 
So some seeds they have only one seed leaf, some seeds they have two seed leaves, some seeds they have one cotyledon, they are called as monocot, some seeds they have two cotyledons, they are called as dicot. So what is the example of a dicot you see while eating cashew nut? If you see a cashew nut, it's a whole cashew nut. That means the cashew will be like this. This is the nut, cashew nut. If you break open the cashew nut, you will get two cashew halves, two halves like this. You can break open just ground nut also in the same way and Bengal gram also in the same way. If you break open the Bengal gram seed, you will get two equal halves. Those two are two cotyledons. So here you have dicot in the sense, two cotyledons. Monocot in the sense, one cotyledon. So what are the examples of monocotyledons? Rice, wheat, barley, maize, jowar, all these are monocots. That means all the cereals are monocots. So what are the examples of dicots? Gram, pulses, green gram, black gram, Bengal gram, all these are dicot because they have two cotyledons in their seed. So why we are talking all this about here when you are discussing about the root? So there is a relation. So here in an experiment for an activity we have taken monocot seeds and dicot seeds. What is the example of monocot I told for example maize? We have taken maize. And what example I told for dicot? Gram. Bengal gram. We have taken. So where you have taken? You have taken two small bowls or katoris named as A and B. Now you have taken some wet cotton spread over there, wet cotton, cotton you sprinkle some water. Now you have taken here maize, maize seeds here, maize. Here you have taken gram. Like this and you sprinkled water. So on the wet cloth you allowed it for overnight, you soaked the seeds in the wet cotton for the whole night, then you will find the seeds they get started sprouting. Sprouts in the sense they start producing small baby root and a small baby shoot, right? So we have observed that change in both the cases, in both the categories A and B. So what is the change? Change is that the seeds they produced baby root and baby shoot. Now the question is both do they look alike or not? The root and shoot, the baby root and baby shoot of the maize, is it exactly like the baby root and baby shoot of the gram? No, it's not. There is a difference. So what kind of difference that we observe if you plant these sprouts in the soil, right? So when they are very small, you see that the maize, the maize it has a very thin root, very thin shoot, whereas the Bengal gram, it's having a thick shoot and a thick root. So the maize, it may produce one or two thin hair like roots, whereas the gram, it gives out a thick single root. Now we planted both this. So we have taken in a pot A and B. So this is the plant, this is the maize plant. And this is the gram plant. So here the, you see the root. And here you see the roots. So do you find any difference or do you find both are same? Yes, we find the difference. See, in case of A, that is the maize plant, the roots are arising from the end of the stem. So how are the roots? The roots are fibrous. The roots are like thin fibers. 
so many roots arising from single point all these roots are like thin fibers so such root system is called as fibrous root system fibrous roots okay now let us look at the other case in case of the gram there is a main root a main root this is the main root called as tap root tap root the tap root it has got so many root heights these are the root heights so here the main one is called as tap root and the other branches of the root are called lateral roots lateral roots okay and there are so many fine hairs which are called as root hairs so that is the tap root system here it is called as tap root system here it is called as fibrous root system there is a difference right so the difference is in the form of the roots so here we are finding two different types of plants monocots and dicots that means the seeds which have one seed leaf or monocot seed with two seed leaves are dicots if you plant a monocot seed you will get the roots fibrous roots if you plant a dicot seed you get a root tap root lateral roots and root hairs okay so now here we are trying to find out the relation is there any connection with the kind of root system and to the type of venation in the previous part of this lesson the beginning part of the lesson when we studied about the leaf there we have studied the venation of leaves the pattern of veins the network of veins how they are arranged in the leaf that was studied right so there we found two types of venation what was that parallel venation and reticulate venation let me draw here so here we find parallel venation in case of a in case of b we see the reticulate venation so now we are trying to find the connection between the type of venation to the type of rooting so here we have fibrous roots and tap root so in case of reticulate venation in case of reticulate venation we will find tap root system the plants with leaves that has reticulate venation such plants will have tap root system the plants that have parallel venation in their leaves they have fibrous root system so here it is parallel and the venation is parallel and the root system is fibrous so how does this help us what do you get from this say for example somebody have shown you one plant just you observed the leaf you didn't see how the roots are under the soil because generally we can't see the roots because they are beneath the soil you can't see the roots with your naked eye unless until you pull out the plant so just you were shown with the leaf outside so you have seen the leaf and you could tell that what sort of rooting system that plant has got right you have observed the leaf the leaf is having parallel veins so easily you can say that the roots are fibrous and you found the leaf is having reticulate venation you could say that you can say that the root system is tap root system so it's fixed there so just by having a look at the leaf surely you can say that what kind of roots it has got under the ground so not only leaf if you are given the seeds by looking at the seeds also you can tell that the seeds with a single seed leaf single cotyledon they are monocots they have fibrous root system and parallel venation and if you are given with a seed with two seed leaves or two cotyledons you can say that that it is a dicot plant it has got reticulate venation in the leaves and tap root system in the root so that's all about the roots of the plants now we realized the importance so here three things we have studied about the root in this particular lesson that is the importance of root and types of roots 
and relation between roots and venation. Okay? So, in the importance we have seen that the root helps the plant to fix in the soil. That is one function. The second function is it absorption helps in the absorption of water and minerals. See, if you have taken any plant and cut the roots and plant it in the soil, you are watering regularly. Do you think the plant live? In most of the cases it does not live. But in some cases the plants have the ability to produce new roots. Of course, in some flowering plants, in flower plants, in the gardens, they follow this technique. But in most of the plants, what happens is that just if you take off the root system and simply you put the stem, especially the herbs, it cannot live because it cannot absorb water by the stem from the soil. It needs the help of roots to absorb the soil. That is what happens. Okay? So, this is all about the root of the plant. So, we studied about the leaf and we studied about the stem and we studied about the root. Now, we are going to the next part of the plant that is the flower. Okay, now, look at the next important part that is the flower. Okay. So, the flower has got different parts. We observe the flower for different plants and trees. But the general difference that you observe between the leaf and flower, if you observe the color of leaf of any plant or tree, mostly it is green. Right? You may be seeing so many kind of plants, herbs, shrubs, trees around you in the garden, but all of them will be wearing, bearing green color leaves. But how about flowers? Do you find the same color, similar shaped or patterned flowers on all the trees and plants? No. Okay? So, you find flowers in different colors, flowers with different fragrances. So, there is a lot of variety difference in the flowers and most important thing is the flowers are very attractive. So, why they are so attractive? Why they are differently colored? Why certain flowers they release the sweet fragrance, sweet smell? Do you know the reasons for all these questions? Okay. So, let us explore the parts of a flower first. Right? And after that, I will tell you the answer to the questions that I have put. Meanwhile, we will see what are the various parts of a flower. So, flowers, even though they appear in different colors, we find some similar structures in the flowers. Right? So, the flower, when it is in the form of a bud, you see, when the flower is like a bud, it is covered by some green color leaves. The flower is like a bud, on the surface, some green color which are called as sepals, sepals. So, sepals are the outermost layer or covering of a flower, sepal. So, the sepals they are covering the colorful ones of the flower, which are the main attraction. So, what is the colored part of a flower? Sometimes of course, they are white in color. Sometimes they are red in color, pink in color, orange in color and number of colors, purple color, blue color likewise. So, those are the petals. So, petals are the attractive part, petal. Right, sepals, petals. Now, inside that there are some interesting structures. What are those? There you find some stick like stand like structures, finger like projections called as stamens. So, this whole thing is called as a stamen. The stamen itself has got two parts. One is the top part is called as filament and the bottom one is called as anther. Anther and filament together called as stamens. So, this stamen has got two different parts. Each stamen is made up of two parts. Let me draw over here. So, this is the filament part of the stamen, filament, and above the filament, there you find anther. 
So, together anther and filament, anther plus filament, together you call it as stamen. Stamens, right? So, we find stamens in the plants, in the flower. Of course, some flowers do not contain stamens. Some flowers may contain stamens, right? So, we will find one more part in the flowers that is the pistil. This is called as pistil. The center one, the whole thing is called as a pistil. You can observe a shape here that is just looks like a flower vase. That is the pistil. Again, the pistil has got three distinct parts. This is called as stigma. This is called as style. And this part is called as ovary. Right? So now, again in the ovary, just if you cut the ovary with the help of a blade, if you make a thin section and see that what is there inside, you can find small ovules. So, a flower, it consists of sepals, petals, stamens, pistil. It is a typical flower. That means, I have drawn a flower which is having all the parts. But practically, in general, some flowers may not have stamens. They have only pistil, petals, sepals. Some flowers may not have pistils. They have only stamens, petals, sepals. But some flowers, they may have all the things like stamens, pistil, petals and sepals. Right. So, here we have seen the different parts of the flower. Here we are not going to mention the functions of these parts because that you are going to learn in your higher classes. Right. Here just we are studying the anatomy, just we are studying the cross section of a flower, what is there inside. Right. So here if you open the flower, that means if you pluck some petals, you can see these parts, but you cannot see the ovules because they are embedded inside the ovary. So how do you find the ovules that you need to perform an activity? But here you must be taking the caution that you have to work with a fine blade, so you cannot do that on your own. Take the help, assistance of any elders or teachers. Let it be a teacher demonstration. Your teacher will dissect that. She will cut the ovary into two halves with the help of a fine short blade. So, when it is cut, it is height wise. That means vertical section. So, inside you can see so many ovules. Right. So, you know one fact. The fruits, they develop from the flowers. That means this flower, after some time, it turns into a fruit. But which part of this flower becomes the fruit? Do you know? Is it the sepals or the petals or stamens or pistil? Yes, the answer is the pistil. So the pistil, it grows up in size and it becomes the fruit. Then you have some seeds in the fruit. Which parts become the seeds in the fruit? So the ovary becomes the fruit, the ovules they turn into seeds. So when you when you eat a fruit, the pips or the seeds that you are throwing out, those are the ovules. The part, the fleshy part that you are eating is the ovary of a flower, right? So the flowers they change into fruits. That's the big story. How a flower changes to a fruit. It's a big story. So, when you study that story in your higher classes 7 and 8, then you will understand the function of each and every part of this flower. So, I told you that I'll give answers to the questions why flowers they have colorful petals and why they have sweet fragrance. So, that is you know that the flowers they need the help of insects to turn into fruits. So, flowers to attract the insects, they have colorful petals and they have good fragrance, nice sweet smell to attract the insects. So, now here we forgot to mention about one important part that is, you see that all the parts of the flower, 
all the parts of the flower they are arranged here they are connected and it is held by a stalk called as peduncle peduncle so this is the one on which all these parts are attached to that right children so we have seen the importance of different parts the functioning as well as the structure of different parts of the plant we began with the stem leaf root and flowers right so in the higher classes you study about the other parts like fruits and buds of the plant okay so here we have gone through the different parts and their function so we understood so many things about the plant and its functioning that is the inner structure the working of the plant in which you have learned different points about the leaf roots stem and flower 